Someone's got a new lawnmower. What? One of those hover things. I wonder if it's a reconditioned one. What? Harold's lawnmower. He's got a new lawnmower, I told you. I wish you'd do that upstairs. Can't. Draft under the door. Not healthy. I wonder if Harold might lend it to you. Then what? His lawnmower. In the winter? Well, you never cut it when it should have been. Oh. I'll ask this. All right. You could do it this afternoon. Can't do it this afternoon, certainly, innit? I thought you said you didn't have a match today. I rang up Ribvale's arranged a friendly. No point in wasting a Saturday afternoon, is there? At home, is it, then? Yeah. So you'll be at the pitch all morning? That's right. Why is it always you who's got to go down to the pitch? Mend the goalposts, cut the grass, wipe their noses for them. Let's not go through all that again, love. Well, there should be some sort of rota. Yeah. Why not? Well, we had a rota last season. Three matches in a row, and the pitch wasn't marked at all. They just take advantage of you. Yeah. I don't know why you put up with it. They're just kids, thoughtless. Well, this has got a new dress. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Jay Green, with matching buttons all down one side. Uh, where are my socks? Where they always are. Oh. I thought I might go into town myself today. You know, see if I could get myself something. Oh, good. Perhaps get my hair done at the same time, huh? Yeah, why not? Phyllis does it. I never seem to be able to find anything that suits me. Don't know how she does it. I'll get a dress then, shall I, Don? Yeah. Of course, I mean, I don't spend as much as she does. I could get two for what it costs her to get one. If you want quality, you've got to pay for it. You used to come with me. What? You used to help me choose. Those were the days. Well, I used to enjoy it. That's more than I did. Huh? Well, we always ended up having a row because the one you were stuck on was the one I could never stand you in. You're not being for lunch, then? Uh, no, I have a pint and a pie with the lads and spread eagle. Ah, uh, save your cooking. I got steak. No, save it for tonight. Will you be late? Same time as usual, back in time for match of the day. Of course. See you then. Yeah. Six eight two one nine. Yeah. Yes, it is. That's right. Yeah, every Saturday morning. I see. What do you know where the office is? Ah. Well, what was it about? All right. Huh. Yeah. Yes, I've got that. No, I think I'll find it. All right. Take me about uh, about an hour. All right. Mrs. Redding? Yes? Frank Markham. Yours, I think. Oh. Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry. Come in. I'll just pop them in the fridge. I'll open them in it. Mm. Perhaps you'd like to go through. Thank you.
Oh, yes, yes, no trouble at all. Well, my husband says when it comes to giving directions, I'm the world's worst. Really? No, it does you an injustice. Could I take your coat? Mm. Thank you. Tea or coffee? Oh, whichever's easiest. Well, I usually have coffee this time of the morning. Fine, thanks. I won't be a minute. Instant, I'm afraid. I'm sorry? Oh, the coffee. Instant. Oh, in my favourite kind. <laughs> Donald polishes those religiously every Sunday morning. You a football fan, Mr. Marker? No, I'm one of what they call the missing millions. That's your husband, is it? Yes. Yes, he was about 20 when that was taken. Everybody said he'd play for England one day. Oh, did he? No. Cigarette, Mr. Marker. No, I don't smoke. Thank you very much. Donald says it's a filthy habit. Still, I suppose you've got to do something. You, uh... Do you have a light? No, I'm afraid I'm. Hold me a minute. Here, oh. let me. Thank you. You're my first private detective. Oh, yeah. Somebody recommend me. I got your name in the yellow pages. I see. I hope you didn't mind coming to the house. No. I, um... Well, I could have come to the office, but uh, I thought it would be easier to talk here. Oh, yeah. Not married yourself, Mr. Marker? No. That must be a help. I mean, in your line of work, not being married. What was you to want to see me about, Mrs. Redding? Well, I... Uh... Oh, excuse me. Come through, if you like. I'm sorry everything's in such a mess. These kitchens. Oh, there's just nowhere to put anything. Our other house was an old one. Falling to pieces, really. But at least there was plenty of room. You have a flat, I expect. That's right, Jess. I don't like flats very much. Sugar? One, please. Watching your weight? <laughs> no, not particularly. Still, it does pay to stay fit in your job. How much are your fees, Mr. Marker? Thank you. Six pounds fifty a day, plus expenses. Expenses? Affairs, hotels, hire a car if necessary, that kind of thing, you know. Oh. More comfortable in the other room, I think. Coffee all right? Oh, mm, fine, thanks. Donald hates coffee. Says it gives him indigestion. Of course, I don't believe him. I think it's just because he prefers tea. He's always liked tea with everything. Even in the days when we used to go out for meals, he always had a pot of tea at the end of it. I prefer coffee myself. Mm. I think coffee tastes so much better. Mrs. Redding. Yes? What exactly was it you wanted to see me about? I'm sorry. I'm talking too much, aren't I? No. Oh, yes, I am. I know I am. I always do it. Drive Donald mad with it. Of course, he's used to it by now. Just seemed to switch his head off. Suddenly. Just like that. I can always tell when he has done. Gets this sort of glazed look. And I am worse when I'm nervous. I'm much worse. Yeah. Take your time. People must tell you some things. Yeah. A bit like a priest, really. But I don't know that I've ever thought of it just like that. I often wonder what they must think. Things people tell them. Uh -huh. 
You were saying? <laughs> He'd like to come out for a bit. Donald. He's got another woman. There's somebody else. I know there is. And you want me to prove it, do you? Well, that is the sort of thing you do, isn't it? Yes. Uh, before we go any further, can I ask you just one question? Yes? Why do you want me to prove it? What have you got in mind if I do? Well, I hadn't really thought. Well, I think you should. No. I need to know. You just said you do know. I need to know for certain. But how much do you know, so far? Little things. Such as? Well, it was the perfume in the first place. I was putting his suit away last Saturday. You know, the one he'd worn, and that's when I first noticed it. Oh, don't you use perfume yourself? Oh, it's not mine. Couldn't be. I do know that. Anything else? His attitude. Lately. How do you mean? Well, it's changed. It's, uh... I mean, Donald was always a warm-blooded man, and lately... I mean, it's not as if he was an old man or anything like that. You go on. Well, that's it, really. Well, just the perfume and his attitude. It's not enough. A bit thin, I'd say. Oh, there is more. Is there? Oh, yes. Things I wasn't going to mention because, well, it's, it's very difficult to put your finger on them. Do what sort of things? Silences. Between you and him? Go into a shop when you know that people have just been talking about you because of the silence. And then there's the sympathetic looks, of course. You know what they say, Mr. Markey, you're always the last person to find out. Suppose there is another woman. There is. Any idea who it might be? Donald works over in on the industrial estate, you know, in one of the small factories. They have this works football team. Of course he doesn't play just runs it now they have a game every Saturday and well, that's where he is today marking the pitch as usual well after the game's over they all go into the local pub for a drink the spread eagle I mean you know what teams are don't you no how do you mean oh, girls there's always girls hanging about a special kind of girl oh I'm not blaming Donald Oh, no. I mean, if a girl throws herself at you, he's only human. And I'm not fooling myself that I'm as young as I was. But I do need to know. There's a match this afternoon, you say? Yes. Yes, on the pitch behind the works. Got a photograph of your husband? A recent one? Come on, engineering! Not the entire team, mate. Once you've beaten your man, find support. The back, lads. Back, quickly. Stop him! Be surprised if it was a fracture. 
Yeah, yeah, there's a, a telephone box down the road, about 50 yards. Right. Take it easy, son. Take it easy. Shivering is broken still. Better safe than sorry. That's right. Anyway, uh, thanks for the help. My pleasure. the England team. Yes, says this fella. I hear they've taken out all your teeth and put 52 seats in. All right, same again, darling, and a uh, packet of wine comes for Freddie here. Yeah, I'll see Miss, miss, half a bit of please. Uh, I'll take responsibility for that. Oh, all right. Small world. <laughs> Make it a pie. No, a bit early for that, I think, don't you? Let me get you one. Oh, I thought it, thanks. Uh -huh. Victory celebration. Yeah, for the other team, we were hammered 4-1. Oh, dear. Can't win them all, can you? Uh, we can't seem to win any. <laughs> uh, Freddy, how's the patient? Oh, he's all right. He'll be walking wounded for a couple of weeks, but he can't be too careful with leg injuries. Yeah. Uh, Freddy, pass me our drink, will you? Um, Frank. Frank Marker. Oh, don't, don't already. Pleased to meet you. Works team, is it? Yeah, there's an engineering up on the estate, Tom. Uh, small plant. You're the team coach or something? That's a laugh. <laughs> well, well, I suppose you could call me that. Well, what would you call him then? Team Mug. <laughs> well, if I wasn't mug enough to arrange everything every weekend, there'd be no team, would there? <laughs> Still, you've got to do something. That's right. Uh, what, what's your pull then? Are you some sort of scout? Do I look like a scout? Oh, yeah, a bit. The Mac. Their giveaway. Ah, uh, no. Sorry to disappoint you. I saw the game, wanted to have a look at you. Mm. I've got this thing, you see, about present day football. I mean, when I was a kid, soccer wasn't like it was today. I mean, people play because they wanted to play. Nowadays, what is it? Just another branch of big business, isn't it? Really amateurs every time. Yeah, but they haven't got the professional polish, have they? Oh, right. You know, it's terrible, but at least they're playing it because that's what they want to do. Look, they want to make money out of it. Even though stupid. Yeah, pretty stupid. <laughs> Phil, welcome to the club. Anybody in there with Freddie Price? Hello. Hello, Fred. Hello, Don. You're looking fit. Yeah, it's a lot cleaner and fresh living, isn't it? Oh, is that what it is? I'll have to remember to try it sometime. You do that. <laughs> so you'll be along later, then? Yeah, for usual. You're going to get us talked about, you know. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> Here we are, then. Oh, Tom, Tom. Hello. Oh, uh, oh, Gladys Motter, this is Frank... Uh, Marker. Uh, Marker. Pleased to meet you. Uh, Gladys is what you might call our team mascot. Is that what they call it? Can I get you a drink? No, some other time, thanks. Sure. Yeah, I only popped in for a pack of bags. Must go. Nice to have met you, anyhow. I'll see you when I see you, then. If I don't see you first. Oh, oh. Bye. Right. That's how glad that is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
just again then. Yeah, that's right. I can always tell. Oh, yeah. Your face down to your knees. Honestly, John, I don't know why you bother. Well, it's because I get the chance to meet so many attractive birds, isn't it? <laughs> you want a cup of tea while you're here then? No, no thanks, I have to go. I see you on Tuesday then. Uh, same, same time, usually. All right, can you see yourself out, John? Uh, sure. Hi, right, Claire. Night, John. Yeah. I went into town. Oh, yeah. Do you like it? What? The dress. Yeah, nice. Eight pounds. Oh, bargain then. You like it then? Great, suits you. It's not really. I mean, usually when I go into a shop, I see dozens and dozens of things, and I never like any of them. But this time, well, there it was, right in the window. Of course, I knew it was me the minute I laid eyes on it. Phyllis put me onto it. Phyllis? Yeah. The shop, I mean. I went over there for coffee this morning. I was telling her, you know, how I admired the things she always wore, and I never seemed to be able to get anything to suit me. And she said, well, what about this shop? So I said, well, of course, I'd seen it. But, I mean, I thought the things were a bit young for me. Anyway, I went over and there it was. Glad you like it. I've done your steak and chips, all right? Anything, yeah. Alan Garling, another new man going with England. You started smoking then? What? I said, have you started smoking? You know I've never smoked. Oh, where'd you get those from then? Uh, over there on the telly. They must be Frank's. Frank? Yeah, you know, Frank, the boy from the insurance. Smokes like a chimney, non stop. You've probably forgotten them. Oh, I see. I'll give them back to him next time he comes round. Six eight two one nine. Yeah. Oh, good morning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I did. Well, no, nothing at all, really. Well, it's early days yet, isn't it? What today? Well, can't you bring it over to the office? How's that? No, I. Something I want to show you. Well, I think it might help. No, I. I can't really bring it. It's. Well, I think it's important, yes. Oh, well, what, sometime before lunch? It's all right. Go there. Yes, I did. You got time for coffee? Oh, well, I was just starting the lunch, really. All right. Like it? Oh, that's it. <laughs> very nice. Well, it's very much you, I think. Well, it's very simple, of course. Well, I don't like fuss. Oh, neither do I. And she's such a nice girl. Yeah. I'm very grateful to you. You must go there again. I see Harold's got a new lawnmower. Latest thing. Works like a helicopter. Donald was wondering if he might borrow it. Donald? Do you think he'd use it? I wish I could get him interested in the garden. If he had his way, that lawn would be a flat slab of concrete. <laughs> 
I suppose Harold's one of those people with green fingers. Something to do with love, isn't it? How do you mean? I think I read it once. Yeah. People we say have got green fingers are actually people who love plants. And plants respond to love. Really? Yes. It's sort of aura. <laughs> Did you know you could love a garden into producing a better plant? You see, if you love flowers, they flourish. And if you don't, they fade away. A bit like people. Sexy little beasts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see who it is. Yes, Mr. Marker. It'll be about the insurance, will it? Come in. Um, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh, this is Phyllis. Mrs. Bentham, my next door neighbour. This is Frank Marker. Hi. Hello. Uh, it'll be about the new policy, I expect, will it, Frank? That's right, dear, the new policy. I always say you can't have too much insurance these days. Oh, true, true. What company are you with, Mr. Marker? Well, it's not so much a company as such, Mrs. Um, oh. you know, it's more of an agency. Phyllis and I were just going to have coffee, actually. Oh, I see. Well, look, I'll tell you what, I'll call back, or better still, you can pop in at the office. Oh, now, don't bother. I've got to get back anyway. You sure? Yes, I'll see you later. Bye. Uh, sorry. So good. I am sorry. When I saw you standing there, I just said the first thing that came into my no, head. No, sure, I can quite understand. Do you think she realised? No, not for a minute. Take your coat. No, I'm fine, thanks. Coffee? I just had one, thanks. Bottle of beer. There is some beer. It's, um, my new dress, you see. She just popped in to have a look at it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you know I was voted the best dressed woman of the week once when we were on holiday? Is that so? Yeah. Thank you. Well, it was holiday camp. I don't go much on holiday camps myself, but Donald wanted to go. Said it was an ideal place for a honeymoon. A holiday camp. Really? Cheers. Had this pale green dress with golden flowers all over it. Cost me a fortune. More than I could afford, really, but still, on your honeymoon. Oh, you are quiet, quiet. Don said it was the nicest dress he'd ever seen on a woman. I kept it for years. But I never really lost my figure, you see. I mean, you don't the same, you know, if you don't have any... Um, be all right? Mm, yes, fine, fine. Oh, thank you. Not that we didn't want any, you understand. I mean, it wasn't deliberate. No. No, simply that we, uh... Well, well, in the end, we went to the doctor and we had all these tests. And he said it was my fault. I mean, not that it's ever anybody's fault, really. Just, well, you... Yeah, more bad luck, really. Yes. Yes, that's what we thought at first. <laughs> Naturally, we were disappointed. I mean, Donald especially. He wanted a son, you see. Men always do, don't they? <clears throat> but in the long run, we haven't been disappointed. Oh, no. We've been lucky. I really mean that, Mr Marker. You see, I've seen so many marriages that have been ruined by the arrival of a first baby. Oh, I know they're supposed to seal a marriage, but, I mean, I don't happen to think that's always the case. Don't you agree? Well, I mean, it's not a subject I've thought very much about, really. I'm sorry. What? I'm doing it again, aren't I? What's that? Going on. Ah. You said you had something you wanted to show me. Yes. What happened on Saturday? Well, I told you on the phone. Well, he went to the match, had some drinks with the team in the pub, dropped off some dirty washing, came home. That was all. What was it you wanted to show me? Yeah, but what about the girls? I mean, there were girls there, weren't oh, there? Oh, yes, there were a couple of girls there. Well, how were they? With Donald, I mean. Oh, friendly, I'd say. No more than that. But I got the impression they were the girlfriends of a couple of lads in the team. Mrs. Redding, your husband's a middle-aged man. These girls are just kids, barely out of school. Didn't you know that young girls found mature men attractive? Did you? At their age? It's a fact of life. I sometimes think it's a rumour, actually, put about by middle-aged men. 
You like the sort of thing, Mr. Marker? Fair bit, yeah. Must find it very boring. I mean, of all the things you have to do, you must find this the most boring. It's a living. You don't believe a word I've said, do you? Don't I? Do you think I've imagined the whole thing? Now, what on earth makes you say that? Impression. I don't stay in business by making snap judgments. But that is what you feel, isn't it? At this stage, I've got no feelings one way or the other. Although I must say that your husband doesn't behave like a man who's being unfaithful. I'm not living up to your expectations, am I? Oh, please, don't go. I'm sorry, Mr Marker. I'm not usually like this, really. I mean, this thing's just got me... I mean, Donald, he's the last person in the world I would have ever expected. You said you had something to show me. Can I see it, please, so I can go? Yes. This is the shirt that he wore last Saturday night. No. No, the, uh, the lipstick. Uh, the collar. Couldn't you have shown this to me the other day when I was here? Well, I meant to, but I forgot. You forgot? Yes. Thanks. I'll be in touch. Glasses for the strip. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Tuesday. Those. He was thirsty. I gave him a bottle of beer. Who? Frank. Frank? Yeah, you know, Frank. The boy from the insurance. Came back for his cigarette, so I gave him a drink. What's that? Frank. Yes, he's a nice boy, Frank. <laughs> Passing through. You looking for work? I'm always doing that. Skill or unskill? Ah, it's a bit of a moot point, isn't it? What time do you have to be back? Oh, half an hour, something like that, huh? Why? Well, I'm just going up the pub to pass a quick one. Yeah, all right. Two halves a bit of this. Oh, you're one of the idle poor, are you? That's right, yeah. A little word called redundancy. Oh, what do you do? Oh, most things, really. Machinist, like. Oh, well, keep my ears open, please. Chum. Do you want something to eat? Uh, I've had lunch, then. Oh, I have a meat pie, please. There we are. Cheers. A habit. What's that? I'm oh, busy. All the best habits are, aren't they? Another game on Saturday, is there? Yeah, league leaders at home. Blood match, eh? You don't go. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, did you ever play football, Frank? Me? Yeah. Two left feet. You look very handy, though. Uh, I was, uh, once upon a time still. 
That's another story, isn't it? What do you mean? Well, we don't want to go into that. No. Ah, come on. Well, me and my old man, we had it all worked out, you know. I was going places, right at the top. Are you going to try and grow, are you? Well, half a dozen first division teams wanted me to sign on. Yeah. Well, what happened? Did you fancy the life? You must be joking. It was the only life I did fancy. Well, why did you do it, then? My old man. Well, brother. If they want you, they'll have to pay for you, he kept saying. You watch it. If they want you, they'll cough up. You listen to your old man and hang on. <laughs> so I hung on. It's the last match of the season. Not one of them even mattered. And me and this stupid left back went up for the same ball and bingo. We're both down. Well, he's all right. He will be, won't he? Big stupid nit. Me? I'm on my back in hospital. Well, how serious was it then? Oh, ligaments gone behind the patella. So they put you in class for three weeks and then they wait. If you're lucky, you're out and about in no time. If not, well, there's other things in life besides football, isn't there? Oh, the same, a bit tough. Well, uh, sad little story. So, like I said, it was a long time ago. Are you uh, going to come down and watch the team on set there? Yeah, I can't see why not. You want to watch it, they'll be making you the team mascot. I thought that was, um, what's her name? Gladys. Oh, Gladys. You're down there every Saturday, are you? Dawn till dusk. Oh, I have to be, don't I? It's all part of life's rich tapestry for the team mug, isn't it? Still, you have to do something. Your wife doesn't mind. Yeah, what do you mean? Well, I mean, lots of women work. Husbands away all day, every Saturday. Oh, Matt. Why not? Well, she trusts me. You're a lucky man. Mm. She understands me. Well, what's her for to understand then? Oh, look around here. <laughs> Cooling towers, chimneys, like Danny's bloody inferno. When the wind's in the wrong direction. <laughs> still, still, it's pretty so destroying, isn't it? Have you ever thought, Frank, uh, why there are so many strikes? No. Boredom. Oh, crap. Yeah. Oh, boredom with a job and boredom with the conditions. Mad, she understands that. She knows I'm bored with this bloody job. That's why I have to go down to the park or with the lads on a set and pretend I'm Joe Mercer and Don Revy all rolling in one. Stupid, eh? No, not necessarily. Yeah. You married, Frank? Me? No. Oh, fancy free. That's what they tell me. I suppose it's all right if that's what you want. But you don't want that. Oh, not me. I want my dinner cooked, my bed's made, and my shirt's signed. Yeah. It's funny, funny, really. What is it? Oh, me and Madge got together. Well, how was that? Well, she was just one of the birds, you know, one of the girls who used to hang around the team, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, to me, she was just a face in the crowd. I mean, I was a team glamour boy, you know, picturing the paper every week. And then uh, I had my leg done and... Uh, Nobody seemed to want to know. Nobody except her, eh? Yeah, that's right. Oh, we knew where we were. There we were, walking down the aisle together. I wouldn't change our match, mate. She has her faults, but who hasn't? Nearly. One help. Ah, she acts on a bit about sometimes, about nothing. <laughs> Well, that's women for you, isn't it? And you don't have to listen. No, true enough. Ah, Got it. Comfortable. That's what me and Madge are, Frank. Comfortable. You found out something. Is that it? Well, uh, yes and no, really. Oh? Yeah, I think, um, I think you ought to call it a day. Save my time and your money. Well, that's for me to decide, surely. Well, not entirely, no. Why? Uh, there are two possible outcomes, aren't there? Either I get something on your husband, or I don't. So? Well, I don't think I'm going to get anything. Because I don't think there's anything there to be got. I thought you said you didn't make snap judgments. I don't, no. You can be so sure, then, can you, after just five days? Sometimes, yes, I'm as sure as you can ever be. Look, Mrs. Redding, you don't work for a living, do you? Donald didn't want me to work. No, so you're stuck up in that house for hours on end, on your own. Nothing to do with it. No? I said you didn't believe me. I told you at the beginning I had a completely open mind about it. 
So what happened to change him? I've talked to him. I've talked to you. What about the shirt? I mean, the lipstick on the collar. Well, I don't know. A joke, perhaps. One of the lads in the team, you know, sort of thing they would do, just for a giggle, isn't it? But I don't believe that. What did your husband say about it? What? Well, surely you tackled him about it first, didn't you? Lipstick on the collar of his shirt? No, of course not. Well, why not? Well, because it would have aroused his suspicions. More suspicious not to, I would have thought. I mean, the stain as big as that one. Oh, come on, Mrs. Redding, let's be realistic. A man who's being unfaithful to his wife doesn't come home with lipstick on the collar of his shirt. Why not? <laughs> well, because his mistress girlfriend would make damn sure he didn't. That's why not. Your husband would have had to have seen that. It was right in the front here. He couldn't have missed it. Any more than she could have. Where you come from, then? I don't know. Any ideas yourself? Don't know what you mean. Don't you? How many times you seen my husband, Mr. Marker? A couple of times. Why? What did you think of him? Did you like him as a person? Well, I suppose I did, you. He's a man's man. Men generally do like him. Whereas I generally have the opposite effect myself. Yes, I talk too much, you see. I fuss. Panic. Stuff the gaps with words in case there's a silence. Of course, I mean, I knew, Mr. Marker, that that was the effect I had on you right from the start. My personal feelings have nothing or whatever to do with it. If I'd come up with anything, you would have got it. Every single thing. Well, of course. What else? What about Mrs. Mottram? Mrs. Gladys Mottram. What about her? Did you know my husband visited her twice last week? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Then why didn't you mention it? That's what you were being paid to do, wasn't it? I'm being paid to find out whether or not your husband's being unfaithful to you, not to provide you with a comprehensive list of all the females he happens to meet in the course of a week. Now, I don't think your husband is playing around. For what it's worth. I could be wrong, of course. I have been known to be wrong. But if he is, it isn't with Mrs. Mottram. You can take my word for that. No. Then what was he doing at her house? Your husband visited Miss Gladys Mottram at her house in Beacon Street on Saturday night at nine o'clock. He left at exactly three minutes past. He went there again on Tuesday. On that occasion, he stayed for five minutes. They're just good friends, that's all. She washes the strip for the team. He drops it off on Saturday, picks it up on Tuesday. I'm not telling you anything new, am I? It's been happening for years, every week during the football season. And don't tell me you didn't know. Because if you do, I have to say, I just don't believe you. I don't know what's going on here, Mrs. Redding, and quite frankly, I don't want to know any more. You'll find my bill in there. You take it with you, saving the trouble of posting it. Just like that. I don't like ball games, Mrs. Redding. Especially when I'm being used as the ball. You think I'm some kind of a nut. That's it, isn't it? There is another woman. Has Madge gone out? Uh, yeah, she's going to visit her sister in Croydon. Oh. You're going to mow the grass. Do me a favour. Well, if you ever get round to it, it's in the shed. Thanks. <clears throat> Harold's gone to the institute, gardening class. Better than me. Miss me? All week.
Oh. Oh, hello. I called round to pay your bill. I thought cash would be better. Oh, yes, too. Busy? Yeah, I was just going out, as a matter of fact. I won't keep you. Look, I'm sorry if I was a bit rough on you the other day. Not at all. You were right. Quite right. Oh, was I? I was using you. I don't use people as a rule, but I was using you. I suppose I thought you wouldn't mind. I was paying you. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, forget it. Donald wouldn't be unfaithful to me. Last person in the world. Ah, it's just that we've reached that age, you see. What do they call it? The age of indifference. I suppose I thought if somebody started to come round, a man would have made him jealous. Well, at least curious. Anyway, it would have got back to him. I mean, you can't keep things quiet for long where we live. And it's worked. Oh, yes. Really has. These last two days have been like a second honeymoon. So, you see, it was cheap, Mr Marker. Cheap at the price. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh! He's giving up the team. Gotta sort out the garden. Congratulations. Felice is gonna get Harold to give him a few tips. Bye, Mr Marker. Bye. I should have got out at Reading. By the time I woke up, a train was pulling into Paddington. And you missed your last train home. Mm. 10.42, Waterloo. No bus. 
Victoria Coach Station, 9.15. Couldn't you have got a minicab? That's 23 miles. Cheaper to stay overnight. If we go one floor up, I can do you a double. Cost you an extra pound. No, no, no. This is fine. Fine. It's interior sprung, so you'll sleep okay. Oh, good. Oh, and breakfast at eight. Thanks. Oh, listen, um, can I get something now, do you think? Well, I can do some sandwiches and a glass of beer. Couldn't be better. All you have to do is ask. That's not the first one of those you poured here. No, nor the last. So, you followed them to Malvern, then what? You want to know it all, don't you? Yes, of course I do. Well, I know what hotel they're staying at. All I need now is a room number. So you hand in a note for him at reception and you see what pigeonhole it goes into. I can't tell you much, can I? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Sorry to bother you. No trouble. Do you have any five penny pieces? I'll look in my bag. Hang on. I might have some. Yes, I have. How many do you want? Three, if you have them. Three enough, I've got four. Oh, three will be fine. I just want to call home, let them know I'm all in one piece. If it was me, I'd reverse the charges. Thank you. Breakfast to date. Oh, thanks. Uh, could you give me a call? 7.30? Fine. Good night. Hey, what's the matter with that girl? What's the matter with me? Why? What do you mean? Well, five penny pieces. They don't fit the phone box, not anymore. Oh, no. Oh, well, I expect she'll be down again in a minute. Is she a resident or bird of passage? One nighter. Aren't they all? Uh, do you mind if I take this upstairs? I'm feeling a bit tired. No, no, of course not. Yeah. I'll see you at breakfast then. Yeah, no. No. Sleep tight. Train fare, overnight hotel, snack on train, extra fare, Paddington ready. Morning. Yeah, hang on. You're bright and early. Yeah, I've got to get back and open the shop. Well, I brought you a cup of tea to help you on your way. Oh, sir. Sir, thanks very much. Mr. Marker. Mr. Marker. Yeah? Mr. Marker. What's up? What's the matter? I can't get an answer, and I think I can smell gas. Oh, there's gas all right. Now, who's in there? That young girl. Oh, hold up. That door and get an ambulance. Hurry up, get an ambulance. Tampering with the evidence. Well, uh, who? CID, Detective Sergeant Collin. Your marker. Yeah, Mr. Marker. 
You found the body? That's right. She did. Not that I've heard. Oh, good. Handy, you knowing mouth to mouth? Uh -huh. Yes, very. What do you do, Mr. Marker? I'm an inquiry agent. No. Well, I never. Not next Jack, are you? No. Member of the association? No. I see. One of those. So what brings you here? Dose bus, please. That job. Concerning this girl? No. I may have to know. I may have to tell you. You'd never seen it before? Not before last night. No note? No, apparently not. A bit unusual, wouldn't you say? Yes. Couldn't Very. it just have slipped into your pocket, could it? It could, but it didn't. Save everyone a lot of aggro. For attempted suicide, read accident, grateful father, buys you off, yes? No. And are you sure you didn't know her? That you weren't following her? Look, Mrs. What's her name? The hotel proprietor has called me. And you came. And I came. The age of chivalry is not dead. All right, but stick around, Mr. Barker. How long? What do you mean, how long? Well, it costs money. Put it on your expenses. My case is finished. So you won't have to pay so much surtax this year. Thank you. I didn't know there was anybody in here. That's all right. Yeah. Thanks for the loan of the paper. Oh. Uh, would you like a cup of coffee? Uh, yes, yeah, all right. Thanks. Fine. Sad, isn't it? What's that? To want to end it all at that age. Ah, yes, if that's what she did want. What do you mean? Well, she put in an early morning call, didn't she? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, but maybe when she asked for the call, she hadn't decided to kill herself. Not finally decided, I mean. But she already had the five penny pieces by then. Yes. So you think that she asked for the call just to make sure that somebody found her? Something like that. I suppose it could have been an accident. What were the eye to dance stuff at the bottom of the door? Well, the room is drafty. Oh, yes, so is mine, but still. Well, it is possible. No, Paris suicide, that's what they call it. Well, they used to call attempted suicide, but if you didn't really mean it, it can't rightly be called attempted, can it? So what was she trying to do? Oh, feeling sorry for herself, getting back at someone, crying for help, pay your money, take your choice. Pretty risky. Mm-hmm. Not to be recommended, though any next of kin. The police have sent for somebody. Ah, uh, yes. It, um, it looks as if I might be needing the room for another night. Oh, well, it's an ill wind. Come in. Mr. Marker? Huh? My name is Arthur Wellard. Oh, oh hello. Uh, I came to thank you for what you did for my Jenny. Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, but for you, I don't know where she'd be right now. Have you seen her? I have. i just come from the hospital. How is she? Um, muzzy. I think she's full of drugs, but they say she's going to be all right. Oh, well, that's the main thing, isn't it? Ah, oh, certainly is. Uh, could I talk to you for a minute? Hmm, yeah, come in, come in, drag up a chair. The chair. Uh, Mr. Marker, do you know Wiltshire at all? Well, no, no, I can't say I actually know it. I have a place near Amesbury. Over 300 acres, mixed farming, oh, yeah. lovely house, grand walking country. I can't think of anything the girl could want for. Ah, uh, well. She has her own bank account. I'm not an ungenerous man. No, I'm sure. She's free to come and go. I, I don't ask questions. There's not much point these days, is there? She has a car of her own. Little red Spitfire. Uh, we're comfortable enough. I can't understand how she should want to do a dreadful thing like that. Well, you know who to ask. I can't. I'd rather not. Then why's that? Well... See, um, for me to uh, probe, well, it would destroy something, you know. It would uh, be destructive, you understand? 
Well, no, not really. Are you sure you're not making more of this than you need to? Look, Mr. Marker, I'm told you're a private investigator. Right, Sergeant. Well, I'd like you to find out. Well, what's there to find out? Well, what went wrong? The whys and the wherefores. You can be professional about it, you know, uh, detached. I can't. Well, you've obviously thought it over. Oh, yes, I have. What does your wife say? Mr. Marker, Jenny is my wife. <laughs> Portuguese escudos. Yes, we met on a cruise ship to Madeira. She was working in the shop. Ah. I had these made up for her. When you got married soon after you came back, did ah, you? That's it, the whirlwind shipboard romance straight out of the travel brochure. <laughs> Has she, um, she ever run away before? Wives don't run away. They just leave. Well, has she ever left before? Yes. Often? Yes. Often. When was the first time? If you can remember. Oh, yes. One doesn't forget things like that. It was after we'd been married about a year. A little less. A lot less. She'd been gone about two or three days. And I got a call from the uh, Bristol CID. She'd been picked up at some all-night party. Drugs raid. She just happened to be there. She ever talk about suicide before? No. Is there anyone she confided in, apart from yourself? Not that I know of. Her mother? Died last year. Was that a great loss for her? No, no. no. Well, no, I, well, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. And what about her father? Oh, he's dead, too. She never mentions him, but I think she thought a great deal of him. And no brothers or sisters? No, no, no. She was the only one. Do you know many people here in London? Not that I know of. Oh, I see your wife's single name is Robin. That's right. Sarah Graham, do you know her? Sarah Graham? No, never heard of her. Peter Harris? No. Patricia Jenkins? No. Mary Leslie? Ah, maybe. Well, that's vaguely familiar. I don't pry, Mr. Marker. What made you, um... How did you marry her, Mr. Wellard? Because I needed her. Because I think she needed me. And now you think she doesn't? Oh, I'd be a fool not to think that. Not that I don't love her anymore. I mean, there are still times when it's absolutely perfect. You know? St. Agnes, is that where you were married? No, no, no. We were married in the local parish church. My family have been married and buried there for generations. Where does she go? Have you any idea when she goes away? Well, if she tells me, that's fine. If she doesn't, I don't ask. Well, if you did, would she tell you? She'd make it clear that the questions weren't welcome. She gets moods, you see. I, I can spot them coming on. She uh, gets restless, impatient, you know. I can tell by little things, like, uh, well, the way she reads a newspaper, as if they don't print what she wants to read. Huh? <laughs> All sorts of signs that are familiar to me that she's probably quite unaware of, like, uh, oh, you know, little things. Um, well, the way she washes up, 
She doesn't care if she breaks plates. The way she throws down Barnwell, saucer of meat. Yeah, who's Barnwell? Her cat. She loves him, but there are times when she's quite brutal with him. And then, after she's gone, it's awful. You, you know, quiet. Well, there are one or two London addresses in here. May as well start with them. We might find out why your wife came to London. Yes, may I speak to Miss Patricia Jenkins, please? Oh, I see. Well, how are you? Oh, well, then perhaps you can help me, Mrs. Jenkins. We don't seem to have had any tax returns from your daughter for the past couple of years. I'm sure there's quite some simple explanation. I thought it might be something like that. I wonder if you'd mind giving me her new address just for our records? Yes. Thank you, thank you very much. Sorry to have bothered you. Goodbye. Jenkins and Russell are the same person. She's married. Is that how it's done? How oh, what's done? Oh, you get your information. Can you think of a better way? I think I'm more at home with my pigs. Oh, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I'll see you I'm... later. <laughs> uh, back here. Could I have a word with you for a few minutes? What are you selling? I'm not selling anything. What do you want? Just a couple of minutes of your time. Well, of course, I suppose we could talk out here, if you don't mind. Come in. I'm very busy, so if we can make this as brief as possible. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, Jenny Weller. Jenny Weller, Jenny Robbins, that was. Do you know her? Yes. Have you been in touch with her recently? No. How long is it? Look, what is all this? How long is it? I heard from her just before Christmas. What is all this about? I wonder if you'd mind telling me when you first met her. I'm not going to pay, you know. I beg your pardon? No money. No? Not now, nor any other time. Oh, I see. If you got one fifty pounds, you'd want another, then another. Ah, blackmail. Well, you should know. But this is 1973. We're not in the Dark Ages now. Yes, well, some things don't change all that quickly. Look, let's get this straight. I am not paying. And if you don't get out right now, I shall call the police. Agent. Jenny Willard tried to guess herself yesterday morning. Oh, no. They took her to the hospital. They think she's going to be all right. I'm working for her husband. Oh, my God. Did she get a note like mine? It's possible. May I see your note, please? Thank you. Uh, you got the envelope? Threw it away. Can you remember the postmark? We couldn't make it out. I see. Is this the only one of these you had? Yes. When did it come? Monday. Why wait over five years? Oh, no idea. Do you mind if I hang on to this for a bit? With pleasure. Mrs. Russell, why are you being blackmailed? If I tell you, would it help? I don't know, it might. Jenny, two other girls and myself spent the summer of 67 together in a nursing home. Sarah Graham and uh, Mary... Mary Leslie, that's right. 
Victims of jukebox romance. The sociologist's word for it, not mine. Oh, thank you for being so honest. I suppose Jenny hasn't told her husband. It could very well be. Silly if she hasn't. She's very proud of him. Is she? Her letters are full of him. He's a gentleman farmer down in Wiltshire somewhere. That's right, yes. Pretty dishy, according to her. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know about that. This nursing home, what was the name of it? St Agnes House. It's up in Highgate. St Agnes? I assumed that was a church. Uh, Miss Barnwell was the superintendent. Barnwell. <laughs> you said the summer of 1967, not just two nights. Two nights? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I see. No, Mr Marker, legal abortions weren't so easy to come by in 67. First, you had to find your doctor. No, we four had ours the old-fashioned way. What happened to the children? Adopted. All four of them? Yes. Look, if you hear anything further about um, how to hand over the money, anything like that, will you get in touch with me, that number? Do you think you'll catch him? Well, it won't be for want of trying. Come in. How did it go? All right, some progress. How is she? Well, she was asleep, but uh, she looks a lot better. Girl, I'd like to go and see her if that's all right. Why not? Here. Help me crack this. With pleasure. I think we've earned it. Let's have it anyway. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Mr. Willard, um, I have something to say that may shock you. St. Agnes isn't a church, it's a nursing home. Oh, it... you mean the baby she had? Oh, you know about that? Oh, yes, her mother told me. Ah, well, the girl I've been to see, Patricia Russell, was in the same nursing home at the same time. She got this through the post on Monday. There are some bastards about. Yeah. Now, if your wife got a similar note... That would explain everything. Well, it would start to, yes. You're right. So what's the next step, Mr. Marker? For me to talk to your wife, I think. Uh, and then? And then get in touch with the other girl, Sarah Graham, Mary Leslie. I want you to find out who wrote that. Oh, uh, is Mrs. Barnes about? She popped out for a couple of minutes. Is this your real address? I shouldn't admit. Just asking, that's all. And can I leave? Oh, sorry. Should have told you yesterday. You're free to go anytime. Thank you. Nice little setup, have you, down there in Windsor? Eaton, actually. Yeah, I manage. Buddy, buddy, with one of the CID men. Top Jack named Furbank. 
Been checking on me, have you? Oh, just a couple of calls, that's all. Crime figures soaring all over the metropolis, including your little patch, and you can afford the time to chat up your mates on a Thames Valley constabulary. Fantastic. Working for Mr. Wellard now, I hear. That's right. Any objections? No skin off my nose. Every time you queue for a bus, you pick up two new clients, don't you? What the hell can you do for him, shoving your oar in? Why can't you leave them alone? Let them... Try to work it out. God, it's difficult enough without you leeching onto them. What would you say if I were to tell you that Mrs. Wellard is being... No, it doesn't matter. Is being what? No, forget it. Oh, guessing games, eh? Go on, clear off. It's time you were clocking up your expenses. Nice working with you, Sergeant. My name's Marker. I'm working for your husband. Isn't your transistor in? Thanks. I'd like to have a few words with you, if I may. What about? Well, one or two things, actually. We, uh, we could start with Barnwell. How is he? Is he missing me? I don't know him. Uh -huh. The matron of St Agnes's nursing home, Highgate. How do you know about her? I'm an inquiry agent. Oh. Yeah, and I've been to see Patricia Russell. Oh, yeah? And she told me. Told you what? That she's being blackmailed. I see. Where is it? Your letter? What letter? A blackmail letter. You did get one, didn't you? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Where is it? I burned it. Ah. Yeah, what did it say? Fifty pounds, cooperate or else. Anything like this? Yeah. Is that why you came to London? To see Patricia Russell? Yes. But you didn't, did you? I went round there the other night to see if she got one too. I was going to talk to her about it, but I didn't. Why not? When I got there, it all seemed so silly. House, husband, baby. I just couldn't. You probably wouldn't understand. So you went back to the hotel and put all those shillings in the gas meter? Oh, she talked it over with her husband, why didn't you? I can't talk to him. He knows about the baby. No, he doesn't. Huh? Your mother told him. My mother? So he said. What the hell did she do that for? She must have known you wouldn't, I suppose. He's never mentioned it. Ah, oh, perhaps if you stuck around a bit more. He thinks you tried to kill yourself. I did. Now, you're a survivor, Mrs. Willard. You're not going to go under. So what the hell was I trying to do? You were in a spot. You did what you always do. You ran away. The gas fire was to bring your husband running after you. Kiss it better. That's all you know. Look, I know it seems unfair. You make one mistake and you go on paying for it. But running away doesn't change anything. The problem doesn't just disappear. It's not as bad as you think. I don't know how you'd know. Blackmailers can't operate unless their victims have got a skeleton in the cupboard. Well, you haven't anymore. You never did have, but you didn't know it. You leave the blackmailer to me, eh? And I'll leave your husband to you. He'll have me back, won't he? Why wouldn't he? Thanks. You're nice. Save it for your husband, eh? What does this mean? 
Mr. Marker. But what it says, I'm afraid, somebody is trying to blackmail some of the girls who have been through your home. Why wait so long? It must be two or three years since Pat was with us. Oh, over five. As long as that. Mm. It makes even less sense. Most of the girls will be settled and married by now. The time to strike was before then, surely. Mm, not necessarily. But isn't this a case for the police? I will try enough when it has to be. I imagine you don't want the police tramping around here. Young girls today are surprisingly resilient, Mr. Marker. Y you know, I'm beginning to find that out. We had a police inspector's daughter with us last year. Oh, we get them all, you know, from illiterates to graduates. The night his daughter had her baby, he visited her. I asked if he'd like to see it, his own grandchild after all. Know what he said? No. Would you want me to look at her appendix? You should have heard him. She wanted to keep it, he wanted it adopted. It was either she came home alone or she didn't come home at all. Good old dad. Well, there was no question for her. She just didn't go back. Doing fine now. Made a home with a well-off family with young children of their own. As I say, they're very, very resourceful. Yeah, mind you, it's just a bit easier nowadays, isn't it? Well, how can I help you? The blackmailer, or blackmailers, have to have access to certain information. Could it be from here? No, certainly not. Former employee of the grudge? Grudge going back five years. Oh, you'd be surprised. Do you ever sack anybody? Anybody ever left under peculiar circumstances? Oh, no, not here. If you work here, it's because you want to help. Where do you keep your records? In that filing cabinet. It's always locked, and the keys are always here. Miss Barnwell, I'm willing to bet that your records of the summer of 1967 either aren't there or aren't complete. Put your money in the box, Mr. Marker. Oh. July, December, 69, 68, 67. Oh. Could you check one or two names for me? Oh, certainly. Patricia Jenkins. Yes. Jenny Robbins. Yes. Sarah Graham. Yes. Are yeah. you reassured? Looks as if I'll have to be, doesn't it? And that is Miss Sarah Graham, is it? And Miss Graham, I wonder if I could have a word with you in person sometime soon? No, you don't know my name. It wouldn't help anyway. Yes, it's about St Agnes's house and the summer of 1967. No, tonight will be fine. Thank you, I'll see you then. Goodbye. What about the magazines and the flowers and all the rest of the stuff? I said the nurse could have them. That was very thoughtful. What about the psychiatrist? I don't have to see one, do I? You don't want to? No. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get home. Now, anything else? Are you feeling all right? We'll soon get some color back into your cheeks. Come on, love. We'll be home for tea. P, by the way. Huh? Yeah. Got that. Um, fancy. Two. Thanks. Oh, are you going over there now? Yes. Oh, well then maybe we'll meet again sometime, Frank. Oh, I should think that's quite on the cards. Every time I wake up at Paddington. <laughs> Take care. Bye then. Thanks for everything.
Oh, hello, yes. Uh, my name's Mark. Uh, I re Excuse me, I I'm looking for Sarah Graham. Come inside. Good evening. Good evening. Can I take your coat? No, no, I'm fine, thanks. Sit down, please. Are you a, a friend, of Miss Graham's relative or something? Brother-in-law. And this gentleman? Dr. Burton, Sarah's fiance. I see. We meet under distasteful circumstances. Don't we, Mr. Marker? Do we? Not that Mark is your real name, of course. Why shouldn't it be? Can you think of any more distasteful crime than blackmail? I rated on a par with drug pushing, pimping and poncing. Don't we all? This conversation is being taped. And if by the end of it you haven't satisfactorily explained why you're here, I shall refer you first to Dr. Burton, then to the police. Frank Marker. Private inquiries. I'm working for the husband of a friend of your sister-in-law. A girl who is in St. Agnes's nursing home with her. What kind of work? What it says on the card. This isn't quite enough, my friend. But I'm sorry, but I came here to talk to Miss Graham, not to explain myself to you. Oh, really? Then let me explain something to you, Roy. Mr. Marker, I think it would be in all our interests if you told us exactly why you came here. My client's wife has had a blackmailing letter. Judging by the attitude of you two gentlemen, I should imagine Miss Graham has had one too. What a smooth-talking bastard he is. Please Can he on. forget his scrum half just for a minute? Just go on. My client's wife tried to gas herself. I've been hired to find out why. Any reason why I should believe all this? Yes, because it's true. Can you give me the other girl's name? Jenny Wellard. Sarah. Good evening. Do you know anybody named Jenny Wellard? Um, the Jenny Robbins that was. Yes. Go on. Well, you can get in touch with the hospital where they took her, the hotel where she did it, the farm where she lives. She should be back there by now. She does live on a farm. That's right, in Wiltshire. Was your letter anything like that? Yes. That's a letter I got from Patricia Russell. Patricia Jenkins, do you? No? Well, what do you think, Roy? Oh, look, would I go around with a collected edition of my own blackmail letters? Do you have a high opinion of solicitors, Mr. Marker? Not especially, no. You should. If it hadn't been for me, you've no idea what you'd have walked into. Dr. Burton, for a start. And the other four were even bigger. Hmm. It's all right. Thank you. Now, who else has had letters? Well, apart from Miss Graham here, there's Patricia Russell and Jenny Wellard and one other girl I hope to check on tomorrow. Mary? Mary Leslie. Oh, there's no need. She's dead, killed in a car crash. Ah. Well, just the three of you then, unless you can come up with any other names. No, there were just the four of us together. Seems a long time to wait, doesn't it? And it's over a week since that note came. Maybe whoever it is likes to see the victim sweat a little. And it's still a long time. Maybe it'll fizzle out. Maybe we won't hear any more about it. What do you think, Mr. Martin? Uh, it's hard to say. You never tell with this kind of thing. It makes you sick. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Look, Mr. Marker, I really must have... Quite all right, it. Doctor, quite all right, I understand. This kind of thing brings out the worst in all of us. How's it going? Well, it isn't, I'm afraid. No? No, I've seen two of the three girls who were in the nursing home with your wife. The fourth's dead. Dead? In a car crash. They've both had identical letters. I've got them with me. I've been to the nursing home, nothing there. And nobody's heard anything more from whoever wrote the letters. What do you suggest? I think I've done all I can. Well, shall we leave it there, then? Uh, unless we hear again. I'm afraid we shall have to. If anything further does happen, I really think it's a police job, you know. Well, 
We'll talk about that when it happens. It's not that I'm scared. You see, Mr. Marker, uh, I'm nearly 50. My wife is only 24. I'm a church deacon, counselor, Greens Committee, etc., etc. Villagers' tongues are very long. They get enough exercise as it is. It's know what you mean. Well, I tell you what. You go on up to the house. Uh, Jenny's not in for the moment, but she should be back any second. The housekeeper will let you in. Uh, wait for me in my den. There's a lovely ten-year-old malt you can run round your palate. I have to wait for the vet. He's only in the next field. All right, thanks. I'll see you in a minute. Be right with you. Me again. Shut the door. So, the big bad wolf's come. In which Jenny's little secret is revealed. Why? Why did you do it? That is no sort of answer. It's a good enough one for you. Look, if you don't come up with an explanation soon, and a pretty good one, I'm going to march round to your local don't police station. Don't threaten me. Why not? You're wasting your breath. Well, don't worry you. Not a bit. No, but it might worry your husband. He might, God willing, he just might have the good sense to kick you out. Don't bet on it. Anyway, I'd survive. You said it yourself. I've managed to survive in this jungle. Jungle? What are you talking about? What jungle? The only jungle you know anything about is the one you've dreamed up inside your own head. Just phony as all the rest of your cheap theatricals. What a bitch. No, I mean it. What a spoiled, self-indulgent, heartless little bitch. Where do you want me? Upstairs or down? I offered you another shilling the other night. I wish you'd have taken it. Would have been the best value for money I've had for years. You know something? I thought it was North Sea gas, non-toxic. I could have really killed myself. What sort of idiotic caper did you think you were up to? Blackmailing your own friend for a lousy 50 quid? Why? I mean, what for? I was bored. Bored? What, did it fill up a wet morning? Was the rest of the world going to be turned upside down to provide you with a few kicks? I don't have to answer to you. 
I don't have to answer to anybody. Don't be superior with me. What are you? Just a cheap money grubber sorting through other people's dirty laundry. Well, I don't give a damn for you or anybody else. Go and tell who you like. He's out there now with his prize pigs. Tell him. He'll listen. He's a great listener. He's not much of a doer, but he's a great listener. Tell him! Arthur. Look. Well, what do you think? It's what I've always wanted. <laughs> Even the colors, right? Of course. Look who chose it. Hmm. You're going to drive me wild in this. Do you know that? <laughs> I hope so. But, Jenny. You must promise me that you'll never do anything like that again. Oh, that. No, 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 no. You promise. Of course. I promise. 